declare that you alone are Jehovah. You are the sun coming king. You are the almighty God. You are the creator, the alpha, omega, the beginning and the end. This morning we acknowledge your supremacy, your sovereignty, your care, your fatherhood. This morning we declare that you are our God. You are a good God. You are a wonderful Father. We declare that we are your children. We are called by your name. We declare that we are in your presence. And in your presence there is fullness of joy. We declare that your hand is upon us as your people this morning. I want you to lift your hands to God this morning and make some declarations. Speak of the goodness of Jehovah. Speak of the mercy of our God. The Bible says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. This morning, let's declare, say, I dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Let's say it together. I dwell in the secret place of the Most High. That, that is why I shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. This morning, I can say of the Lord, Oh God, you are my strength, you are my refuge, you are my fortress, you are my God, you are my Lord, you are my Father, you are my Savior, you are my Redeemer, you are my Preserver, you are my Protector, you are my Deliverer, you are my Waymaker. Now, I want you to turn to Psalm 91 this morning. Let's make the declarations together. Psalm 91 verse 2. Psalm 91 verse 2, it says, I will say of the Lord. See, when David wrote Psalm 23, he, he did not say the Lord is our shepherd. He said the Lord is my shepherd. David was a shepherd caring for sheep. So he had revelation of the role and the function of a shepherd. So he looked at the sheep and said, I am their shepherd. I take care of the sheep. When the lion and the bears come, I come against the sheep. Come against the sheep. I take on the lions and the bears. He then looked up and said, wow, the Lord is my shepherd. He said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? So here was a man, here was a young man who knew the Lord. In Psalm 91, he said, I will say of the Lord. This morning, what would you say of the Lord? Father, we declare this morning your goodness. I will say of the Lord, you are, oh God, my refuge. You are my strength. Let me hear you say, you are my strong tower. You are my defender. You are my healer. You are my preserver. You are my God. You are my Lord. You will deliver me from the snare of the fowler. You will deliver me from the peril of pestilence. This morning, I declare, you will cover me with your feathers. Under your wings, I take refuge. This morning, I proclaim that the truth of your word shall be my shield and my buckler. I declare this morning, I am not afraid of the terror by night. Let me hear you say, I am not afraid of the terror by night. I am not afraid of the terror by night. I am not afraid of the arrow that flies by day. I am not afraid of the pestilence that walks in darkness. I am not afraid of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. I declare this morning, and the words of my mouth are powerful. They will not return to me void. They shall accomplish what I please. 
and prosper in the very thing I send the word to accomplish. I declare this morning a thousand will fall by my left side, ten thousand will fall by my right hand. It shall not come near me, it shall not come near me. I say it again, it will not come near me because, because I have made the Lord my refuge, I have made the most high my dwelling place. No evil shall befall me, no evil shall come near me, no plague shall come near my dwelling. This morning, God gives his angels charge over me. They will keep me in all my ways. They will bear me up. I will not dash my foot against the stone. I stand on the authority of the word of God. And I will tread, I will trample upon lions, upon the cobra, upon serpents. I declare this morning that God has set his love upon me. He will deliver me. He will set me on high because I have known his name. I will call upon the Lord. He will answer me. I will call upon the Lord. He will hear me. He will be with me in trouble. He will deliver me. He will honor me. With long life, my God, my Lord, will satisfy me and show me his salvation. In the name of our Lord Jesus, lift your hands and give God praise. Yes, we praise your name, Lord. Who is the Lord my King? Oh, Lord, you who created us.
Lord, please be seated. Thank you. Well done for that praise this morning. All right, let's, let's recite Psalm 23 together. One, two, let's go. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea. No, no. Say, 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 say it with confidence. Say, yea. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. For how long? Forever. And ever. And ever. And ever. And ever. And ever. And ever. Let's say it again. And I will dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. Can we give the Lord a hand this morning? You would always do what to remember that safety is not the absence of danger. Safety is the presence of the Lord. That's why it's important at this time to cultivate the presence of God. And that's why you must come into an atmosphere of praise and worship and declaration. When Moses said to the Lord, who shall I tell them, send me? He said, tell them, I am, I am, I am that I am. Moses said, what kind of a name is that? And as you know, what God was saying is, I am what I need you what the need is at the time. You need me to be that thing. So I will be your light when it's dark. I'll be your salvation. I'll be your health. I'll be your El Shaddai. I'll be your rock. I'll be your shepherd. I'll be your father. I'll be your redeemer. I'll be your deliverer. Whatever it is you need, I am. So Moses told God, when God said on one occasion, Moses, I'm really angry with these people. And um, I'm not coming with them. An angel will take them into the blessings. Moses said, Lord, <laughs> that's a risky thing. How, how can the world know that there's a difference between us and them? It's not really about the cars or the houses. Even the drug barons have houses in Miami. So the house is not the sign of the blessing. The difference is a presence. So sometimes people give testimonies of cars and houses and jobs. But unbelievers have this thing. The difference is the presence of God. That God is your Jehovah Shammah. Shammah means the Lord is there with you all the time. Hallelujah. Let's turn our Bibles to First Corinthians this morning. explaining this to the leaders of you, I think it was on Saturday. Was it Saturday we looked at this yet? And I want to bring the same message. Uh, I used it to encourage our workers and our leaders last week. It's not a new, in fact, it's a scripture I use all the time. And to those of us, those of you who are watching online, we welcome you this morning and we pray that the Lord bring the word of God into your life. 
Jesus into your heart and into the very place where you are right now. God bless you as you listen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 26, When I spoke about this scripture, I, I just used it to just to make a, a point about the need to have appropriate responses in times of trouble, in times of trial, in times of challenges like we face in the country at this time. So Paul, remember, in First Corinthians. Is given a, a beautiful dissertation, his teaching on some powerful concepts on marriage. But then he, he makes a statement. He says, But because of this present distress, he said it's good for a man to remain as he is. Now, many times we, we twist this scripture out of context. Next verse, he says, he says, are you bound to a wife? This is not the time to be loosed. Are you loose from a wife? Do not seek a wife. Nevertheless, if you marry, you haven't sinned. Nevertheless, such will have trouble in the flesh. I'm trying to spare you. Now, this scripture is quoted out of context. We don't know exactly what is happening in the city of Corinth at this time. Maybe there was some trouble. Maybe there was some persecution. Maybe there was some distress. Maybe there was some tribulation coming upon the people. So Paul is actually giving them instructions. And the context is the trouble in the city. So he was saying, please, because of this present distress, I want you to reconsider your responses even in the area of marriage. That was what he was saying there. He was saying, we are in a distress. So he was saying, this is not a time to, to pick up baggage around you. That's what he was just trying to say. So he was saying that in any season of distress or trouble, that there is a particular need for a way of responding. What Paul was saying is always consider the time in which you live. Because the time in which you live will place a demand on you for a particular kind of response. So whenever there's a crisis or this trouble, you then need to ask yourself, Mm, in view of this present crisis, what is God's requirement? What is God demanding from me? What is the specific response that I'm supposed to bring into the situation? Is God asking me in view of this distress around me to tighten my belt, to hide my head, to speak out. There are regulations concerning war. There's an active response in times of crisis. Is God saying, conserve funds, stay home, pray some more, have some faith, rejoice. So God expects a specific response from you as opposed to a non-specific, generalized, passive, just, uh, just waiting. Uh, no, just going with the flow kind of response. No. So I usually say, if you find yourself in a crisis and continue life as before, then you're not a wise man or a wise woman. So Paul was saying, as good as marriage is, Please, there's certain considerations in view of the distress we're going through. He was just saying, please make a couple of adjustments here and there so you can survive the crisis period. 
So to prevail in a crisis is a certain behavior required of you. Oftentimes we blame God, but meanwhile He wants a specific response from you. When the plague, when the plague was moving around Egypt, was there a specific response that God required of the people? Yes. He said, stay within the house. He said, stay in a certain framework of faith. He said, feed on the word. He said, then the blood will speak for you. So the little boy might have been afraid. Daddy, I can hear cries. I can hear the screams of Egyptians dying. Are we safe? All the father needed to do is say, come. You see the blood on the door. That's our response in this season. It will speak for us. So God always requires a certain response from his people. And that, that then releases his hand to go to work on our behalf. That's why we have faith. Not that it's hard, impossible. And so you're upset with God. But God is saying, give me some faith. Remember the conversation between the gas cooker and the gas cylinder. The cooker and the cylinder have a conversation. The cylinder said to the cooker, I need some fire. Give me some fire and I will give you some gas. Cook said, of course not, it's the other way around. You give me some gas, I'll give you some fire. Is that not so? So we say to God, give me some of your presence. God says, no, you give me some faith. So that there's a response required of you. God has made provision for you to prevail in any crisis. But that provision requires an active response on your part. So in this world, you shall have tribulation. But what are you supposed to do? Cheer up. Please encourage the person next to you. Cheer up. So you need to be of good cheer to overcome. In this world, you shall have tribulation. But excuse me, cheer up. Because you are a world overcomer. So you need to be of good cheer. You need to have a smile on your face. We're called to prevail in a world of crisis with good cheer. We're called to overcome in a world of distress and pain. The triumph of your faith is in the midst of the challenges of life. Where did we get the idea that with God is going to be easy? No, what we are told is He will never leave us nor forsake us. What we are told is that greater is He that's in us than He that's in the world. What we are told is that our faith overcomes the world. So we can be victorious in the midst of challenges. We can lift up our hands and praise God when it looks like everything is falling apart. That's why we are Christians. So to prevail in the midst of trouble, you need certain requirements. You must always have an accurate scriptural response in any contentious situation. That's why you must know the word of God. Remember, someone says to you, what are you doing? Tell them, I'm building, I'm building a business, I'm building a family, I'm building my career. How are you building? Like who? Noah. Who built in the midst of trouble? Who built when there was wickedness on the earth? 
who built when there were giants on the earth, who built when men were marrying, given in marriage. He just kept building. How did he build with perseverance? How did he build with confidence? How did he build without encouragement? How did he build with no reference point on the earth? But he just kept building. So how are you building? Like Noah, how are you walking in these difficult times? Like Enoch, I've got my Enoch loafers on. Enoch walked with God. And at the time he walked with God, it wasn't as though things were okay on the earth. There were problems. How are you fighting? David. So these are specific responses that the Bible gives us. So God does not leave us in the dark. How are you bearing up? I guess that. Remember, never allow the crisis, the challenges, the depression to toss you up and down. Never allow the problem you find yourself in to be what defines your life. Remember, never be called a woman with the issue of blood or the man by the pool of Bethesda. That woman who is always afraid. That man who is always borrowing money. No. Don't be defined by your problems. Be defined by your response to your problems. That woman who is always smiling even though things are hard. One lady said, she said, when we were growing up, she said, I thought my mom liked burnt toast. And whenever the toast got burnt, my mom would say, oh, that's mine, that's mine. And she would eat it with joy. She said, it was when she grew up, she realized mom was just bearing up, trying to save money by eating the burnt toast. And we thought she enjoyed burnt toast. What a powerful woman. The kids stood back and said, our mom was so powerful. How are you? Please ask the person next to you, how are you doing? How are you doing? Some of the pastors told the people, listen, okay, tell them. Because people weren't answering well. He said, okay, tell the person next to you, don't be moved by what you see. I'm full of joy. So one woman told the man, don't be moved by what you see. I'm full of joy. He said, you don't look it. Come on, lift your hand and thank the Lord this morning for his presence, his grace, his strength, his life, his wisdom. Now let's go to Luke chapter 21. In Luke 21, from verse 7, Luke 21, 7. So they asked Jesus, saying, Luke 21, 7, Teacher, when will all these things be, and what sign will there be when these things are about to take place? Verse 8, he said, Take heed that you be not deceived. Many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time has drawn near. He says, Therefore, don't go after them. Be careful about false teachers. But when you hear of wars, this is Jesus speaking. In my Bible, it's the red letter edition, so the words of Jesus are actually in red. Even though all of the Bible is the word of God. But this part actually came from Jesus himself. He said, when you hear of wars and commotions, what did he say? What's your response? Now, are there any other versions? What does your version say? My version says, don't be terrified. Can I have some other versions, please? It says, keep your head and please don't panic. What else? Any other versions? So, don't be frightened, don't be alarmed, don't panic. Now, I know that's not going to be easy, but guess what? That's his required response from you. Can you practice that today? That's why you've got to meditate on the Word of God. You've got to stand on the Word of God. You've got to believe the Word of God. 
I like the story of the man. Remember the story? A pastor came in, knocked on the man's door. He didn't I saw him inside the living room, kept knocking, kept knocking. The man said, Pastor, come in, come in. When he came in, he saw the man standing on the bed. He said, I've been knocking on your door for 30 minutes. What are you doing? He said, Pastor, I'm doing what you're supposed to do. He said, which is what? He said, I'm standing on the word. The pastor said, I didn't mean it that way. I didn't say stand on the Bible. I said, stand on the truth of the word. Now, that's a good illustration. Maybe you can start by standing on your Bible sometimes. He said, don't be terrified. Don't be afraid. That these things will come to pass. These things would happen. But then it's not the end yet. Verse 10, it says, nation will rise up against nation. Kingdom against kingdom. It says that there will be great earthquakes in various places. It says there will be famines. It says there will be pestilences. There will be fearful sights in the air. But he's saying, don't be troubled. I wanted to bring the word of God first. And then perhaps at the end, I started early with the word. Maybe we have a few minutes to talk about the practical issues, but I thought we should stand on the truth of the word of God first. Now look at verse 25. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, eclipses in the stars, and on the earth the nations will come into distress, and there will be some measure of Perplexity. Perplexity means perplexity means confusion produced by pressure. It's like you don't even know which option to take, whether to stay or to go, whether to sit in or to go out. There will be perplexity. The sea and the waves roaring. You know, when it talks about the sea and the waves, it talks about humanity, the movement of humanity. Now, I like verse 26 because I'm a medical doctor. It says, and there would be increased heart failure from fear and the expectation of the future. Can I see the NIV version, please? Men's heart will fail them from fear. Men will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world. So Jesus I was talking to a pastor's conference uh, last two weeks ago, and I was saying to them that they needed to engage what I call a prophetic word, meaning a word that's relevant to the times in which you live. For some people, they want to hear the same message every day. Others want to define you by the season you find yourself. But I always say, find a message that speaks to your situation. Make the word of God practical. And that's why in this season, we're speaking from the pulpit words that speak into your situation. But we also recognize the place of care. And that's why we're encouraging the men get together, the women to hang out together, the singles to get together, those over 60 to get together, the young brothers to hang out together, the men who want to play football play together. Because people need to be encouraged at this time. So we speak the word from the pulpit, but we want you to find a place where you can connect, where the word of God can come to you, even at that level. So Jesus spoke of wars, commotions, revolutions, earthquakes, pestilences, famines. Then, don't miss this, he spoke of the response of the world to the issues. What would their response be? Heart attack. He said, men's heart that the hearts of the people in the world will fail. People 
people will be afraid. What is the world coming to? They'll be afraid of terror, crime, robberies, kidnappings, shootings, cancer, bombings, Ebola virus, and there will be perplexity. They will ask, what is the world coming to? What is the world coming to? Is this not in the Bible? Please, is this not in the Bible? Let's see that NIV version here again. Men's had he said, man, will sin from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world. These are Jesus' words. He says, you don't know which option to take. And that's why, before the service ends, I would like to pray for those of you who have a phobia. I want to pray against that phobia because God has not given you a spirit of fear. Fear is a spirit. A phobia is a spirit. We can pray against it. If it's very bad, we can counsel you out of it. If I had time, I would have prayed for all those whose hearts are failing, all those who have anxiety, who have hypertension, all those who are going through panic attacks at this time, I would really like to pray for you if we have time at the end of the service. Because that's not what God wants you to have in this time. Remember the two ladies when Jesus rose from the dead? The ladies were just going to place some spices and they kept asking themselves, who will roll away the stone? Who will roll away the stone? And they had hypertension on the way, asking, who will roll away the stone? Who will roll away the stone? When they got there, the stone was rolled away. Did you get that point? So many of the things you're worried about, God has taken care of. It's just that you had no faith to tap into it. And the just shall live out by faith. The just shall live, not that the just will get faith to make a move or so. No, you live by faith or you're not alive at all. We're saved by faith through grace. We live by faith. Faith is acting out what you believe about God. That's why we're called believers. And that's why we call the world unbelievers. They don't believe what we believe. We know what we believe. We believe there is God. He's a good God. We never know what the outcome will be, but we know that God is good. We know that God is good. I want to pray for those of you who are afraid of the future. You just, all you see is darkness. I had a vision once, I had a dream. In the dream, I was talking to a group of people. I said, Look up, look up, look out there, look at the valleys, look at the look at the greenery, look at the mountains, look at the veil, it's so beautiful. And they said, it's so dark. I said, no, look properly, look at the sky, see the way the sky contrasts with the grass, even look, look at the rainbow. And they said, no, and then one of them stretched out his hand. He said, look, I can even see the suit. And I saw his hands were black. So I looked again. Now, while I was saying, look at the valley and look at the hills and the mountains, a mechanic had taken a plate. You know what they what we used to do welding with in those days, those welding plates that had a bit of suit on it, and took a big plate and put it in front of the people. So I was here pointing to the valley, but they were feeling the suits. It was all black metal. I pray that the enemy would not obscure your vision or your view of God in this time. But in verse 28, this is where we close. When these things, which things, the wars, the commotions, the revolutions, the earthquake, the fearful sights, the Ebola, the pestilences, the bombings, the troubles. When these things begin to happen, can I see the NIV version, please? Stand up and lift up your head. Wow! What a response! 
So if I looked at you and you were Christian today, what should I anticipate in terms of your re- of your reaction? Standing up, looking up. This is how everyone should be standing up. They said to you, what are you doing? Tell them a specific, intentional, deliberate, determined response based on the word of God. Don't forget the smile on your face. Like you sing the national anthem. It's not a time to cast your head. The enemy wants your head down. Wants your shoulders sagging. Jesus said, stand up. Can I see the message version, please? When all these things start to happen, stand up on your feet. Stand tall with your head high. Why? Oh, you guys are not here this morning. Help is on the way. But you've got to be standing with your head held high to know that help is on the way. So when the angels see those standing, that's where they stop. They have instructions. Like the Bible says, resist the devil and he'll flee. So the devil has instructions. Hey, hey, when they resist you, you're supposed to flee. So when you don't resist, he'll be wanting, they allow me to go on. He's been told, when they resist you, because forever, oh God, your word is settled in heaven. We must begin to be believers. Are there any believers in this house? Let me hear you say, I am a believer. Now lift up your, lift up your Bible. This is my Bible. Uh, this is my iPad. This is my tablet, whatever it is. It is the word of God. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I declare this morning that the Lord is my light. I will say of the Lord, you are my light, my salvation, my God, my trust, my hope, my Father, my Savior, my Deliverer, my help in time of trouble. I will say of the Lord, He is my light, He is my wisdom, He has become my son. I will say of the Lord, His hand is upon me, His grace is sufficient. I will say of the Lord, I am not afraid of the terror by day, of the arrow that flies by night. I will say of the Lord, He will preserve me, my coming in and my going out. Come on, lift your voice and make some noise, hallelujah. So the Bible does not leave us in the dark. The Bible does not leave us in the dark. It gives us direction. Tells us what to do. Now, God made man in his own image. But man wants to make God in the image of man. So we want God to do the things we ask him to do. Remember, as they said, that God didn't give the ten, how do they say it? God didn't give the ten suggestions or the ten ideas. He gave the ten commandments. He gave us his word and told us to stand upon his word. We're wise, but we're standing on the truth of the word. Our redemption. So where does help come from? What does Psalmist say? I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. The Lord who keeps Israel will neither sleep nor slumber. Unless the Lord builds, the labor in vain that build. Unless the Lord keeps the city, the watchman breaketh not in vain. This is season to pray, but I want your prayer to be predicated on your faith. Whatever is not of faith, the Bible says is sin. Remember those two men in, in two different apartments in the same block. 
There were the sounds of shootings and bombings at night. There was just so much panic in the air. And one of the brothers woke up in a panic and he was a prayer warrior. And thank God, at 1 a.m., he just had the gunshot. Wah, wah. Wow, he just began to pray. Shaka Baraka Basu, Kabakata Wakata, Lebron Lobos Kabakata. He just prayed in Branda Mastaba. He prayed for three hours from one to four, and it was at 4 a.m. The sound of gunshots just petered out. He thought, Thank you, Lord, and then went and slept. In the other apartment, that man also heard the sound of the gunshots. He got up. Something said to him, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? He promptly went back to sleep. Now, who was more powerful? I was saying we shouldn't pray. But I think that second guy was somehow more powerful. Do you know what Peter was doing the day before they killed him, or they were supposed to kill him? Sleeping. If you don't have faith, go to sleep. That means don't walk around in unbelief. Go get some rest. God is demanding a particular response from his leaders, from his people, from the church. Also, when we say, stand up, lift up your eyes, it means to see things from a different perspective. And we're called to see beyond the natural. Do you know? We can even see opportunities in the midst of a crisis. A couple of years ago, I knew a gentleman who tried to, he tried to sell sanitizers. He went beyond the hand sanitizers to the ones you fixed in kitchens. So he came to my home and fixed one in our kitchen, you know, where the cooks can, you know, use the sanitizer. He said it's for doors. Then he went to churches where they prayed and laid hands and asked them. He tried to sell his product. He didn't quite catch on. <laughs> so he didn't catch on. He came on Friday. He said, Pastor, I know you ordered some for the church. Can I have them back? Because I haven't seen you using them. He said, I can't meet the demand. I can't meet the demand. He called me excited. I said, be careful now. See opportunities in the midst of the distress. See the hand of God working behind the scenes. See the hand of God controlling the events that you cannot see. That's why David said, I will lift my eyes to Calvary. Now do it. Do it, prophet. You can lift your head up. Lift your head up. Yes, keep your eyes on God. So even if things begin to fall apart, what does Psalm 46 say? Do the earth be removed and be cast into the sea. You will be set, be still, and know. See, Book of Daniel says, they that know their God. This is not a time for church goers. This is a time for those who know their God. This is a time for those who know their God. Let me close. Let's look at two scriptures and we close. Second Peter 1 19. You see, remember what I said that God wants a response from you. But what does the enemy want from you? His own response. The enemy, listen to this. Part of what the enemy wants to do, listen to this carefully, is to destroy your true identity. You didn't hear that. Your true identity is in your response. But the enemy lures you away from it and wants you to respond with hypertension. But you have to respond with faith. 
You want your response mixed up with that of the world so that there's no difference. But guess what happens? He makes you a victim in the midst of the crisis. Meanwhile, your faith should preserve you and protect you. So when David saw Goliath, he said, you are coming to me in the natural. I will take the battle to a different level. I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Now look at this scripture. It says, so we have a prophetic, what's a prophetic word? A prophetic word is where, remember as I said it, you locate your picture in the scripture. You locate something that's so specific to you. So what I'm preaching this morning is what? A prophetic word. Do you understand? A prophetic word speaks of what God is saying. It's not just a non-specific, generalized word of God that you are blessed with all blessings. No, it's a word that's dealing with the crisis in your life, in your marriage, in your family, in your business, in your heart, in your mind. So we come to church to hear not just a word, but a prophetic word. So there's a difference between the word and the prophetic word. So man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded. So the proceeding word is the prophetic word, is the word that God is speaking into the situation currently. So when Peter said, Lord, if it is you, bid me come. Come was a prophetic word. When Ananias went to pray for Saul, Paul, who was blind, he was afraid. He said, that man is a killer. I can't go. He's killed so many people. He killed Stephen. Supervised Stephen's death. God said, go, he's my servant. That was a prophetic word. The sons of Issachar could understand the environment. And they could look at a word of what God was saying. That's a prophetic word. But in Nigeria today, people think a prophetic word is... You are well. It's well with you. It's well with your family. It's well. No, that's not a prophetic word. That's just people speaking good things to you. And that's not bad. That, the prophetic words are that program. You shall not be found wanting. You shall not be found lacking. Hey, God will. No, that's not a prophetic word. That's saying nice things to you about the word of God. A prophetic word locates something in the word. Or God speaks to you, it ministers to you, so that I've brought you a prophetic word today to stand up and look up. And so we have this prophetic word confirmed. And the Bible says you will do well to heed it as a light that shines in a dark place. So you're in darkness, the only light you have is a word. Hmm. Did you get that? The only light you have is the word. That's where God pushes you to the war. That's what Jesus God and you're standing, no shaking. Let's close on Proverbs 4, verse 18. So you wait until things change. So in a dark place, you want a light that shines. You're walking through darkness, but you know that light is coming. So there's darkness everywhere, but you have light. Remember, the plan of the enemy is to bring you to a place of an inaccurate response. But the just shall live by faith. What is faith? The evidence of what things we do not see. The invisible foundation upon which the house the visible house is built. And if any man draws back, if any man draws back, my soul will have no pleasure. So the just shall live by faith. What is faith? It's evidence of what we do not see. So faith is being comfortable in the realm of what you do not see. So faith holds on to the word of God. 
God knows that in times of trouble, you will need something to hold on to. That thing is your faith. Are there any believers in this house? Let me hear you say, I am a believer. Show me by standing up and looking up. No, 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 don't do it now. Do it all week long. Stand up, look up, speak out. I'm adding that to you this morning. The plan of the enemy is to get you to bow down, look down, be discouraged, be fearful. Don't be a victim in the crisis. Please tell the person next to you, do not be a victim in the crisis. God has made provision for your victory. He has. He has. We should sing the song in those days. Do you remember? I feel like marching. No, I feel like moving on this. I feel like moving on. Don't try me else come on every side. I feel like moving with a swag. I feel like I feel like moving on. I feel like moving. So try and stop on every. See, the whole idea is your perspective, your perspective. That's for old people, Pastor Kill. For me, it's old. That's for old people, you know. <laughs> so let me close by saying to you, remember, in every crisis, confusion, perplexity, commotion, distress, things may look terrible and hopeless, hearts may fail, you may feel stressed out, but we're not left without samples from God. Don't even ask God at this time, where are you? He's not going to answer you. He already told you, I will never leave you or forsake you. Why are you asking me a funny question? So be determined that you will not be consumed by the crisis. In fact, in fact, it's in the crisis that you stand tall. You become a king. It's in the crisis, your word is powerful. Your voice is raised. You thunder, you roar, because God's voice is coming through you, because you have the appropriate response. So your prayer becomes a decree. Your praise becomes a rumble. You begin to influence others. You become an encourager of others. You rise and you go to where there's trouble. You donate blood. You send your things to the north. You tell the kids be strong. You visit the hospitals and pray for people. Why? Because it's gone through. You have become a God in the earth. Because your response is a right. You dwell in the secret place of the most high. Your faith is strong. I want to charge you this week. Activate your authority in Christ by standing up, looking up, speaking out. Of course, we will take precautions, hand sanitizers. We would avoid if you eat bad meat, avoid bad meat, you know. Walking fear, you don't get a bowl by swimming or by sitting with someone. We have a professional when we talk about it. Be wise, but be full of faith. Let's close. I'm going to read the scripture and then we close for the day. God, I want to read this. God, look at the King James Version, Proverbs 4:23. Proverbs 4.23, it says, God, your heart. 
Proverbs 4, 23 says, God, your heart. That's what we're doing here today. What are we doing? Keep your heart. Some versions say, God, your heart. How? With diligence. God, your heart. Someone sent me a video that had, you know, how Boko Haram was killing some boys. I was about to delete, so I thought, who shall I trouble with this video? So I knew one boy who needs some troubling, so I just forwarded it to him and deleted it on my iPad. He called me later and said, Pastor Sonny, you just messed up my evening. I said, that was the whole idea. You have to trouble some, something to keep you humble. I said, I didn't even watch it myself. Protect your eye gates. Protect your ears. Guard your heart. Do you know, in the past two days, I haven't even listened to CNN. I just needed faith to preach this morning. So I just stayed on the truth of God's word. What am I doing? I'm guarding my heart. Guarding my heart. Go back to 18. It says, But the path of the just, like a shining light, it shines more and more unto the perfect day. Next verse says, But the way of the wicked is like darkness. This, I want you to pick up this tape and listen to it again. Remember, I said a prophetic word is the light you have in darkness. And the path of the righteous is like light. So if you are walking in darkness, you are like a wicked person. That's not God's plan. Did you get that? You see me walking in darkness. That's the way of wickedness. You have light. You have revelation. You have understanding. You have an accurate response. And today, I'm not trying to stare you. I'm trying to give you the word of truth. The two ways, the path of the just and the way of the wicked. The path of the just and the way of the wicked. And God wants you to walk with wisdom and humility in the path of the just, which just shines more. So as it gets darker, you're shining. There's crisis raging all around us, but there's a pathway. Please go on, go on. Let me close. Go on, go on, go on. Give me New King James Version, please. 1920. Verse 20, please. 21. So, attend to my words. Don't let them depart from your eyes. Keep the words I've spoken today in the midst of your heart. They are life to those who find them, and it's medicine to the flesh. The word of God must bring healing to your body. Lift your hands to God and begin to bless Him this morning. Oh, just bless the Lord this morning. Bless Him for the truth of the word of God that has been spoken. Bless him for faith that's coming because we heard the word. Bless him for the truth and the integrity of his word. Declare forever, O oh God, your word is set within heaven. Declare, I stand upon the truth of your word, my Father. Declare, today is the day that the Lord has made. You will rejoice. You will say of the Lord all through the week, my protector, my way maker. I will be calm in the crisis. I will be normal. I will be strong. I will not die. I will leave and declare the works of Jehovah. This week, pray over your children. Pray over your husband. Pray over your wife. Pray aloud. Say, I know who I am in Christ. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am more than a conqueror. I stand on the truth of the word. I'm not afraid of the terror by night. I'm 
I'm not afraid of the arrow that flies by the day. I'm not afraid of the pestilence that walks in darkness. I stand on the truth of God's word. The blood of Jesus is speaking. I put a seal upon you this morning. Son of Maria, I place the seal of God upon you. I place the protection of God upon you this morning. In the most soon of Maria, let it flow. Let it flow. Now place your hand upon your head. He came with a shiver at the Brokama Sutta Mahana. Brandon was shiver at Kuta Skipra Kata. He anoints me with oil. There's an anointing coming upon you. In Kebranda, he brought Subranda, he has Subrata. He let them all sooner. Let the anointing break forth upon you. Let it flow. I pray for those of you who are watching online that the same grace, the same anointing that's here present will come upon you wherever you are. Those of you watching online, I pray that the oil of God will flow, that God will place a mark upon you, He will place a seal upon you. In the name of our Lord Jesus, I pray against phobias, I pray against fears, I pray against terror. In the name of our Lord Jesus, I declare that God has not given you a spirit of fear, love, power, soundness of mind. Soundness of mind into your life. I break the yoke of fear. Shabra kuta bakata hala kosa. Prato le maske poto shinata haya. So I release you into soundness of mind. Prata, protolo, prekata sha, brandali moskaba. So you will not be afraid in this season. Life has come. Joy has come. Strength has come. Brother Libro. Now begin to give God praise. Hallelujah. Someone shout hallelujah. Someone shout hallelujah. Glory. Someone shout glory to God. Hallelujah. Now is the time to stand and look up. Do it. Do it. My instructor will say, chest up, chest up, heads up. That's your posture in the spirit. That's your standard. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of God, where is the spirit of God? It's not in us. He lifts up a standard. What's the standard? Stand up. Look up, do it again. Look up. Now please sit down, sit down, do it again. Do it, do it like soldiers. All right, everyone. One, two, three, let's go. Stop. Look up. Now speak out. I'm blessed. I'm highly favored. The hand of God is upon me. I pray for my husband. I pray for my wife. My children are safe in the school runs. Life has come. Strength has come. Salvation has come. Joy has come. It is well with me. It is well with me. Well with my family. Well, it is well with this city. Well with the Nigeria. We pray for Nigeria from the north to the south, east and west. And righteousness will prevail. The truth of God word shall spread in the name of our Lord Jesus. Don't put your hands together for the Lord. It's time to 